Coming up, a Moorhead woman wants accountability after seeing how her late mother was treated at an assisted living center. A busy night for firefighters and police after Independence Day celebrations. Plus, with the eviction moratorium set to end, North Dakota has a resource for you if you can't pay your rent. Valley News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 6. I, I'm really upset. I expect it better because uh, it's your parents, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I find it really upsetting. Heartbreaking and disgusting. These are words from one Moorhead woman after she submitted these pictures to our whistleblower hotline. Kim Tracy says she was shocked to see the condition of her mother's feet and says the place her mother was living up until her death needs to be held accountable. Valley News Team's J.C. Dodd spoke with the CEO of Eventide in Moorhead who says they take complaints like this very seriously. It's a story you'll only see here on Valley News Live. In 2016, Kim Tracy put her mother into the care of Eventide off of 8th Street in Moorhead. Tracy admits that over the years she did not stay on top of the condition of her diabetic mother's feet and that it wasn't until after her mother's passing in December of 2020 that she noticed some discoloration to the skin and minimal nail care. I wasn't aware of her and her uh, not getting her toenails cut, her, her grooming care until I lost her in December. I find it pretty heartbreaking and disgusting. Um, I can't believe something like that could even be done to your own family member. I sat down with CEO of Eventide, John Ruer, who says although he isn't sure how this could have happened, he cannot dismiss that this may have happened on his watch. Vice President of Marketing and Communications, Carrie Carney, says as soon as they received the complaint about Tracy's mother's care, they immediately looked into it. Carney says the unit Tracy's mother lived in has undergone re-education of proper foot care after an audit was performed following Tracy's complaint. Our mission is to empower older adults to thrive and we take that very seriously and so we always look at what we can do better and what we can do differently and do that moving forward. Tracy says she just wants everyone to make sure they check in on their loved ones. Well, I would like everybody to know that their family, uh, basically, they want to check to see if their family's okay. That's what hurts me about it. How would you like your mother, father, grandparents, uh, family being taken care of like that at Eventide? In Moorhead, J.C. Dodd, Valley News Live. Carney with Eventide says they always refer residents and families outside the facility to the state health department, for example, if they want to talk with someone else about the complaint. If you'd like us to investigate an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Local law enforcement had a busy night last night responding to firework complaints. Over the past week, Red River Regional Dispatch received 263 firework complaints, more than half of them from within the city of Fargo, where fireworks are illegal. One resident, though, tells us she enjoyed the free show. Last night, there were fireworks kind of all around us, basically just one big circle. It was, not going to lie, kind of fun to sit on our porch and enjoy the free show. <laughs> She tells us just before midnight, several first responders showed up in the neighborhood where fireworks were being shot off, but even that didn't stop the lawbreakers. She said those fireworks continued until 1 in the morning. Fargo fire officials say they responded to 15 fires of those 12 were related to fireworks. Fargo police responded to more than 80 fireworks complaints yesterday alone. Another one of those fireworks related calls, this garage in the 3100 block of 33rd Street South in Fargo. Take a look at that one unit completely destroyed, two others damaged. No one was hurt, no word yet on a total damage estimate. And an investigation is ongoing after a truck caught fire in a hotel parking lot early this morning. Fire crews were called to the La Quinta Inn along 46th Street South in Fargo. The owner of that truck says there weren't any fireworks inside or anything else that could have caught fire. Thankfully, no one there was hurt. These fires come amid a serious drought covering all of the Red River Valley and ranging from moderate to extreme, but it sounds like some relief may be on its way. Summer joins us now to tell us more. Summer. 
Yeah, good evening everyone. Some of us are seeing some sunshine like we just saw on that tower cam in South Fargo from our Luther Family Ford Sky Cam Network, but this was the site earlier this afternoon in Devil's Lake. Some dark clouds passing by and then a few rain showers as well and a few rumbles of thunder in the vicinity. That was in association with a little band of showers and thunderstorms that stretched through the Devil's Lake Basin into the Northern Valley. The lightning has since uh, fallen away from these storms, still seeing plenty of thunder and lightning out in central North Dakota and still a few light passing showers in the southern Red River Valley. But more widespread rain is in the forecast for later on tonight has a ways to go yet before it moves into the valley. Temperatures across the region are in the 80s and 90s 90 at this hour under a mostly sunny sky in Fargo. Lots of 80s across the board cooler in the Devil's Lake Basin with some of that rain cooled air. Stacy, all of us have a big cool down in store for our Tuesday. And I'll also have your rainfall forecast and how much you can expect in your area. All right, thanks so much, Summer. The U.S. Attorney's Office says it'll likely take months for federal agents in Minnesota to start wearing body cameras. The nationwide move comes after members of the U.S. Marshals Task Force shot and killed a man while trying to arrest him. The Department of Justice policy on body-worn cameras for federal agents changed after that man's killing in early June. The acting U.S. Attorney for the District of Minnesota says this is a good thing. So I think it's good that the department's going to be moving in this direction to um, be able to hopefully provide some greater transparency and accountability. Five of the 12 outside agencies that are part of the U.S. Marshals Task Force have suspended their involvement until body-worn cameras are being used. During the interim, the U.S. Mar US Marshals will keep working to seek out fugitives and arrest them. As the country and state of North Dakota continue to recover, a few federal protections put in place during the pandemic are now coming to an end. The evictions moratorium that passed in March of last year as a part of the CARES Act is ending July 31st. While landlords legally were not allowed to evict tenants, they will be allowed to 30 days after that moratorium expires. North Dakota received a part of more than $25 billion in federal funds given to provide emergency rental assistance. State residents can find that assistance through the Coronavirus Rent Help Program through the Department of Human Services. The state program helps qualifying renters pay up to 12 months rent to avoid eviction. After receiving more than $350 million from the U.S. Treasury Department, it replaced the Emergency Rent Bridge Program on June 1st and expanded those who qualify for assistance. More than 600 housing providers across the state are registered to receive direct payments from this program. And since starting last year, more than 2,000 renters have been able to get help. The number of applicants continue to go up in the next few months, according to the DHS policy director. We're receiving probably 200 new applications a week. We've really seen an increase in the last few weeks and expect that to continue through the summer. So the program is definitely open. We're seeing new applicants every week. We're getting new approvals out every week and making sure rent payments are going out the door every week as well. The department also has application counselors available across the state in the next few weeks. We'll have more information on that, qualifications, where you can apply, all on our website. Just click on this story. The U.S. Air Force is planning a massive training exercise over the Northern Plains states. The maneuvers are set for July 19th through the 23rd in the skies over the Powder River Training Complex. That training area is the largest in the continental U.S., covers nearly 35,000 square miles of airspace over the Dakotas, Montana, and Wyoming. With COVID-19 limits fading away, tourists are returning to Minnesota resorts. But the problem is a lot of the workers aren't coming back. A spokesman for Hospitality Minnesota, which oversees the state's hotels, restaurants, resorts, and campgrounds, says the shortage has been building for more than a year. The industry is now down about 50,000 people from where it is in a normal summer. Many workers found other jobs during the first COVID shutdown in March of last year, and others left when a second hospitality shutdown was ordered later in the year. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department confirmed invasive zebra mussels in Twin Lakes. A local cabin owner spotted them attached to a floating log over the weekend. The lake is a popular fishing destination just a few miles north of Lemoor, North Dakota, about six miles from Lake Lemoore, where zebra mussels were discovered last year. Emergency rules are going into effect immediately to try and stop the spread of the invasive species. Still ahead tonight, the drought hurting farmers across the state. Now some of them are turning to a new technique to turn a profit. We'll have those details later. Temperatures remain mild across the valley for at least several more hours. Not fully into the 70s till near midnight in Fargo. 
that's when our rain chances increase a little earlier in Grand Forks. And hang on tight, temperatures are going to plummet around 20 degrees as we head into your Tuesday. We'll have your rainfall forecast and cooler forecast.